I am Don Wycliffe, uh, class of 69, and we have here today uh, three uh, black domers from the 1960s, uh, as well as, first up, my uh, partner in this uh, black domers publication, uh, co-editor David Krashna. Uh, Dave, say hi. <laughs> hey, Don, I will, and I'm glad you didn't complete that sentence by saying uh, crime. This has been a labor of love and celebration, uh, according to our preface, and it has been. Thank you. It's been a pleasure working with you, Don, on this. I'm David Krashna. I'm a graduate of the University of Notre Dame, 1971, and proudly a co-editor of Black Domers of African American students at Notre Dame in their own words. Uh, thank you, thank you. And now I'll ask each of our uh, each of our guests to introduce himself briefly, and then we'll go into questions. Uh, let's start with you, Percy. Okay, I'm Percy Pierre. Uh, I graduated in electrical engineering in 1961 with a bachelor's degree. I uh, got my master's at Notre Dame in 1963. Uh, I'm an engineer, I spent most of my career at universities, some of it at, in government. So that's who I am. Great. And Ben? Yeah, I'm Ben Finley, class of 1960, electrical engineer. Spent 39 years developing weapon systems for various government entities. Uh, and another 47 years changing people's lives across the country. It's a pleasure to be here. Great. And lastly, my classmate, Bill Hurd. Bill. Hey, uh, Bill Hurd here, uh, class of 1969. Um, I'm currently a retired thermologist after 36 years of private practice and uh, to be here. Thank you, thank you. I want to begin by noting uh, uh, that at least two of you gentlemen, uh, Percy and Bill, attended um, all black or virtually all black schools, high schools in the South. Uh, and, um, and each of you in your essays mentioned, you know, you came exceedingly well prepared academically for Notre Dame, in some cases better than your white classmates. Uh, talk about that a little bit, if you will, and why that matters. It, I ask this question because there frequently is a sense that uh, those segregated black institutions were always second rate turning out second rate. Obviously, you guys are not. If you would, Percy. Uh, yes, um, I grew up in New Orleans, and New Orleans um, is a Catholic city, and there were both white and black Catholics, but the church uh, and the schools were segregated. So I went to a black Catholic high school, but there was something special about that high school. It was run by an order of priests called Josephites, <clears throat> and there were a lot of uh, northern priests, primarily <clears throat> from the East Coast, Boston area, who ran it. And they had a mission of preparing us to compete with the best students in the country. So I, I thought I was well prepared. And when I went to Notre Dame, it was to fulfill the, the promise of <clears throat> St. Aug by succeeding. So, and I guess I did. And Bill? Yeah, I came from uh, Manassas High School in Memphis. It was all black, all black teachers, principal. Uh, we actually used hand-me-down hand textbooks from the white schools. But we had, we had advanced placement. We had teachers that cared. And uh, as a result, when I came to Notre Dame, 
uh, actually skip freshman calculus first semester because I had it in high school. And uh, uh, fortunately, I did well at, at Notre Dame coming from an all black school. Uh, I did, I was an athlete. So uh, uh, coming from, I was a highly recruited a sprinter coming from uh, Memphis. And um, I had a choice to go to West Point, uh, Southern Cal, all, uh, Villanova, a lot of the track powers. But I chose Notre Dame because I, I wanted a combination of uh, athletics and, and, and sports. So uh, um, they paired me with my, my roommate uh, freshman year, a, a guy named Mike Holtzapel from Arrington, Ohio. And I think they did it on purpose. He had never, he came from a small uh, Southern Ohio town, you know, mostly white. And he had never really had any personal relationships with black people. And I came from an all black school. And I think they did that on purpose. And, you know, I, I always tell, tell the story that, you know, he came in there listening to hillbilly music and leaving the window wide open in the dead heat of the winter. And <laughs> after the first semester, uh, to, uh, I had him listening to soul music and <laughs> we, we, <laughs> we became friends and uh, uh -huh. it, was a, it was a good match. He learned, he learned a lot from me and I learned a lot from him. So it was a, so that was a good experience. That's great. That's great. But to, but to answer your question, though, I, I came well prepared. Uh -huh. I came. Can I comment on that? Sure. When uh, I went to Notre Dame, there were only two freshmen, and the only other black freshman was my roommate. At that time, Notre Dame paired black students. They would not have done what you just described. <laughs> so, uh, about 1963 that I mentioned to Ted Hesburgh that the practice at Notre Dame was to pair black freshmen and he abolished the policy immediately. So that, just a commentary on your experience versus mine. Ah, uh, no, okay. Not my roommate, he's still my best friend. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, I have to say all three of you guys, uh, seemed to have had good experiences at Notre Dame. You weren't intimidated in any way. You were, you were, I mean, you were leaders in, in your own circles. Uh, talk about that a little bit, if you would, uh, um, Ben. I mean, I think in particular of your story about uh, uh, the Purdue game or whatever it was and, and leading cheers. <laughs> Well, yes. I mean, you have to look back at our era. Our, I arrived on campus in 1956, long before any civil rights activity had taken place, long before the sit-in started. And there were four of us in my class. Uh, and to the best of my knowledge, the previous classes and the ones immediately following us all had somewhere between three and four African-Americans, commonly called Negroes at that time. <laughs> and we were a few grains of pepper and a whole lot of salt. Um, personally, I never, I only experienced one overt racism comment that occurred during the, uh, shall I say, our indoctrination week. And that was far, uh, firmly dismissed with a right hand to the jaw. And I never had any more problems on campus. As far as what um, um, uh, Don is referring to, <clears throat> in my freshman year, we had a game with Purdue. We lost that game as we did most of my games on campus. But the uh, opposing team, their cheerleaders and band uh, decided that they were going to congregate behind Zom Hall, which was my dormitory. And after the game, they congregated back there with their chairs and bands. And I got very insulted by, behind the whole thing. 
and went downstairs and started my own cheering uh, against them. <clears throat> and in the process, called out all of my dorm mates who joined me out behind Zom Hall. And we had a competition until our cheerleaders arrived to take over the incident. So it was fun. <laughs> Never had any problems. Uh, David, any questions? Uh, yes, uh, a question, but I want to just acknowledge each of these uh, gentlemen as distinguished members of the Black alumni, no, the alumni of the University of Notre Dame throughout the decades. And I want to start with uh, Bill Hurd. You were sort of a trigger for this book. Over the years from my graduation in 1971, I looked at people like you who were making sizable, uh, monumental uh, contributions to our society with your avant-garde, progressive, uh, I, let me be more exact from your essay, you uh, <laughs> secured U.S. and foreign patents on a device that measures certain inner parts of the human eye. I, I thought that, and it is so impressive, so I just want to acknowledge that you were a trigger for this book. Well, uh, I did have a, my, my degree from Notre Dame is in double E, just double like, e. Um, yes. Okay. Really? Yes, Read it is. Double E's. Oh, uh, double e. uh, yeah. Actually, Bob, Bob Can and I were the only black double E majors, and Bob Can is still one of my best friends. He's out <laughs> in California, out in LA right now. And, right. Uh, but anyway, yeah, double E, then I went from there to MIT, and I got, a, I got an M, a, a master's degree from the Sloan School of Management at MIT, like an MBA. And then I taught at Tennessee State for a couple of years, and then I decided to go to medical school. So, so at Meharry, right? Uh, right? At Meharry, Meharry Medical School, 1980. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So, okay. uh, I've done a lot of missionary work. Uh, I've been all over Africa doing, you know, free surgery for needed people. Uh, but but uh, getting back to your first question was well, it wasn't uh, a question actually. I was just. I was just commenting on that distinguished development that you came up with. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's called a, um, it's a slit lamp mountable intraocular biometer. It's just a, a device that measures different parts of the eye under the microscope. But that was, that was back when I was a resident. And uh, I haven't really done much marketing, but I did go through all, the whole process of getting it patent, getting a world, getting a, a United States and foreign patent for it. And it was a good experience doing that. Thank you, Bill. Uh, ben, I, I want to acknowledge the fact that you helped found, in fact, you were the initial chairperson, president of the Black Alumni of Notre Dame uh, organization that was formed with uh, your leadership and Father Ted Hesburgh as well in 1985. But more than that, you have been recruiting Black students to the University of Notre Dame for years, in fact, uh, your group has been called Ben Kids, so uh, we all appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Percy, uh, at one point you were the Assistant Secretary of the U.S. Army. Quite impressive. And tell us about your na your recent appointment to the National of the National Academy of Engineering. I think that's impressive as well. Tell us a little bit about that, please. Okay. Well, that's. That's what I'm doing now. The National Academy of Engineering is an honorific society. Uh, you've got to be elected to it. We've got about 2,000 members, but it's also a leader in the profession and it attempts to address national problems. Well, I've been working with the Academy for many years on a variety of things, but uh, when uh, uh, George Floyd was killed, that escalated everything. And I recommended to the president of the Academy a variety of things, one of which was to set up a committee of distinguished people, experienced people, to try to address racial justice and equity. So that committee was announced uh, about a month ago, two months ago, we've had one meeting and we're trying to address both racial justice and equity. The equity equation can be addressed through education to try to get more 
blacks into the field. And we sort of know how to do that. We've been doing that for some time. But the racial justice part of it and the impact that engineers have on that is a little more difficult. But there is an impact. Uh, perhaps the biggest impact is the, the use of information technology in so many fields like health that sometimes uh, inadvertently perhaps uh, might have a disproportionate impact on African Americans <clears throat> or in other than the health, health field, criminal justice, uh, prosecutors make decisions. They say that they don't intend to have a disproportionate impact, impact on blacks, but they do. So what we're doing is trying to come up with strategies for addressing these problems and find partners, primarily industry, to actually uh, do something. So we're, we're focused on action and uh, we're just getting started. I know a lot of other people are working this. Uh, I encourage everybody to work on it, but we're trying to do our part. We have a, we have a very good team. Thank you, thank you, Percy. Now, Don, I wanted to ask the question of this uh, group as to what they would say to the current black students at Notre Dame and possibly the future black students at Notre Dame, given what's going on, not only in the country, but specifically at Notre Dame, and we're all mindful of the grievances set forth in the Young <laughs> Black Alumni Petition. So if I can, Don, I'm gonna ask uh, Ben to start to give very brief comments. I think our time is getting bad uh, uh, for, uh, precious at this point. It's never bad. It's precious at this point. Ben, how would you respond to that? Um, first of all, I would respond by saying to the current student body that it is indeed a pleasure to pass this off to you to carry on the fight. I think one of the things you have to understand as you go through this, there's some key points. One, please understand your environment. You are in a Catholic, primarily white institution. It is a university. And across the board, all, it, all university issues are treated like research projects, where talk is plentiful and action is very slow. Next, recognize that Notre Dame is a microcosm of America, where students come from everywhere. So what's happening across the country is going to show up on your campus. And that goes on from a black side and a white side. Next, I suggest you document your goals. First, you are there to obtain an education, which will allow you to obtain your goals in life. And secondly, you are there to be activists, hopefully having fun. Um, and I suggest that you pick your battles in addressing racial equity very carefully. You can't address all issues of it simultaneously. And finally, I suggest you establish relationships. These are the things that Pete Percy calls allies. You have faculty and staff who are willing and able, currently willing and able to help you in this challenge. For example, when it comes to training or retraining faculty and staff in the morose situation, I suggest that you reach out to a lady by the name of Dr. Maria and uh, McKenna, who is the only white female in the African, Africana Studies Department. She has been trained uh, to, in a program that Notre Dame played for called Seeking Educational Equity and Diversion. And she went off to a seven day program where she was trained to bring back to campus techniques to address the issues that you are currently dealing with. And finally, have fun doing this. Thank you, Ben. I'm good. Thank you for the shout out to my good friend, Professor Maria McKenna. Bill Hurd, what's your take on this? What would you say to the current students? Well, actually, <clears throat> I have two sons. Both of them started at Notre Dame. I have two sons that went to Notre Dame. Congratulations, my, man. Yeah, my younger son, Ryan Hurt, uh, finished Notre Dame in 2005 with a double degree. 
in Japanese and computer science. He's out in LA now doing visual effects. My younger son didn't like Notre Dame because of the racial, because of some racial issue. So he left and went to Xavier down in New Orleans. So that was interesting. Well, uh, I was at Notre Dame at a time when, you know, it was the racial climate was pretty volatile. You know, Martin Luther King assassination. Uh, my roommate, Art McFarlane, who is now a judge down in Charleston, and he was my roommate for the last two years at Notre Dame in Alumni Hall. Uh -huh. He was the president of the Black Student Alumni. So, I mean, he's actually the one, we the one that started it. He was the one that started it. And there was an incident I just might mention. Uh, Strom Thurmond was invited to speak at Thorin Hall, at uh, Zorin Hall. What is Zorin Hall? Washington. And <laughs> Washington Hall. And so we got all, we got all the, the members of the Black Alumni Association together. We, we sat in the front row. Then when, when he began to speak, we got up and left. So that was our way of being actively involved in trying to show that, you know, uh, in, a, in what's currently uh, considered Black Lives Matter so to speak. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, uh, it's, it's, it's good to see across the nation the involvement of, of more of people other than just uh, people of color protesting. It's good to see that. That's a good sign. That means that uh, now uh, at least people are paying attention um, to the racial climate in this country. We got to get out and vote, though. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Yeah. And um, Art McFarland was the first president of the Afro-American Society. Yes. Percy, what's your take on this? Well, I'd like to endorse what has already been said. Uh, ben gave a uh, good group of suggestions, and Bill also. Uh, I'd just like to add one thing. And I'm going to take this from uh, Michelle Obama when I was watching her on television. She was at a high school and a young black girl asked her, what do I do when I see racial uh, incidents, when, I, when this happens to me, when that happens to me? Uh, that is, what do I do about this environment that is can be racially uh, negative. And what Michelle Obama said, well, start with yourself. First of all, you have to have confidence in yourself. You have to develop yourself. You have to be strong. I would tell Notre Dame students that first of all, they came to Notre Dame to develop themselves, that that is the first priority if you don't do that, you, you really can't help the situation. And there will be challenges and there will be racism and you have to fight that. But don't let that derail you from what you came there to get. And if you get what you came there to get, you will be in a position to help a lot more five years from now, 10 years from now. So fight the good fight, uh, but First of all, make sure you get what you came there to get. And then years later, you will be in a position to do even more. So that will be my message too. Mm -hmm. Thanks to all three of you. Don, back to you. Okay. I, I just want to uh, ask one thing. Uh, Bill, you related your experience uh, rooming with Mike Holtzapfel and um, what can what can the administ and and Percy mentioned you know a change of, a change of policy that led to that? What more can the university do in policy terms? Um, just off the top of your heads, one suggestion from each of you, if if possible. 
Um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I'm probably not the person to ask about that. I, I, I don't, you know, I'm not an administrative type person. Uh huh. Uh, but I guess uh, diversity, more, uh, more uh, African American uh, professors. Um, I don't know. Okay. I don't uh, ben? To start, you know, to start. Sure, sure. Um, last night, I took the young alumni's position and I marked suggestions. Um, basically, they, they identified things that fall into two categories. One, there are microaggressions, uh, which, gee, are interesting, but there's not much you can really do about that. Uh, because these micro address aggressions that they put in the petition came from parents outside yeah. the community and the parents are going to disappear. And then there were quite a few issues that had to do with the Notre Dame Police Department, who they felt were hassling them in many different ways. Uh, conversations with the current female chief of the African American, I mean, I'm sorry, of the Notre Dame Police Department indicate that she is available and willing to talk with the students and work with them to cure these defects, which she has already started on. Um, and finally, there was the issue that came about in training faculty and staff to recognize their implicit biases that they come to the campus with in one way, shape, or form or the other. And that in those areas, I suggested that they reach out and essentially retrain faculty that my five minute warning. <laughs> Retrain faculty and staff using the assistance of Dr. Maria McKenna. I'll be more than happy to shoot this, this marked up document to anybody that wants to see it. Great, great. And Percy? Um, what we're talking about is a culture, uh, the Notre Dame culture. Uh, every university has a culture. And I think there are many things that need to be done uh, to improve that culture. I think a good fir first step would be to acknowledge the problem. The more the university will acknowledge the problem, the easier it will be to fix. I think there are a lot of people on the campus, faculty and staff, who if they really knew about these problems would step up to do something about them. Uh -huh. You know, I found a lot of white people have helped me in my career. There are a lot of good white people out there. <laughs> There's some who don't care. But if the problem was better recognized, I think people would step up. So yeah. it's a culture thing. Very good. good point. Thank all of you. Uh, our three guests, Ben, Percy, Bill, um, David, thank you. And thank uh, you, Don. And uh, good day. Thank you. Okay.